Welcome back, people of everywhere, for another session of R&R. &R. And, uh... I was supposed to have this review uploaded yesterday, but somehow it got deleted. I'm looking at you, Channing Potato Tot. You know bloody well and good that you're the one that deleted it, you fat werewolf-looking dummy. Go get a haircut and trim yourself a decent beard. Well, that was just rude. Anyway, this time we are looking at Friday the 13th, A New Beginning. We follow the story of Tommy Jarvis as he goes to a new mental health facility after he is still traumatized by what he did to Jason as a child. He must learn to face his fears though as there is a new killer out on the loose picking off the patients at the facility one by one with the same M.O. as Jason. So starting off with what I enjoyed is the guy playing Tommy this time. Obviously, it's a different actor because this takes place much later in his life, at least eight years. It establishes Tommy was 12 in the last movie, and this guy looks to be like 20. He does a good job of portraying a mentally troubled character, and he hardly speaks through the whole thing. I could probably count on one hand how many actual lines he has. Most of his acting comes through facial expressions, body language, and just emoting how he feels, and I feel he did a really good job with that. Another couple of decent performances came from a young kid and his older brother. His older brother I really enjoyed. He was in maybe two scenes, though. And a couple of the patients at the facility give decent performances. Other than that, a lot of people are really bad. The obligatory blonde heroine that we get in this movie is terrible. She's really bad. There are certain times in the movie where I was literally cringing at her line delivery. That's not good. Following the last movie, which had really good performances from the obligatory blonde heroine. Why is it always blonde? I don't get it. And... This one does a couple of things that remind me of part two. I didn't like part two. The first being that the kills really kinda suck. Why? When we have established that you can get good kills in shots without going into an X rating, that you can keep it in the R rating but still keep the kills entertaining, why? Do these directors keep doing the thing where it shows the killer stab somebody and then cuts away to a reaction shot and then cuts back to them being dead? Why? If I had to point out a couple of good kills, one would be the older brother that I mentioned, and it's only good because you actually see it. He's in a porta potty and he gets a metal rod stabbed through him. That's it. Another one is a greaser guy gets a road flare into the mouth and sets his head on fire or something. Yep. A greaser. Why is there a greaser in this movie? That's a good question, considering the fact that I just said that this movie takes place probably eight years after the last one. Counting that... Plus the fact that part two took place five years after the first one, this movie has to be taking place at least in the early 90s. Why are there two greasers on the side of the road? I'll tell you why. Because this movie enjoys adding scenes that are only there to pad the runtime. And I guess it's to show that there's a killer on the loose, but I mean, we know that. It's a Friday the 13th movie. If they wanted to just show it, then I feel like they could have done it a little more fluidly. Another thing this movie likes to do is throw red herrings at you. All over the place. There's one guy that's thrown in there to make you think that he's the killer, and he's literally in two scenes. In his second scene, he gets killed by the killer as he's watching two teenagers have sex. So yeah, he needed to die anyway. And the other thing that made me think of part two 
is the ending. I didn't like the ending. Okay, so we find out who the killer is. We find out what his motivation was. We find out why he was posing as Jason, all in a very tell-don't-show kind of way, which is just really sloppy storytelling. And then we go in to check on Tommy, who was resting in the hospital, recovering from his wounds after taking on... not Jason. Then he wakes up to see one of his visions of old Jason, which he gets throughout the movie, but then he conquers his fear and then goes over to a desk in his hospital room where he just has the new Jason mask? Why does he have that? And then he smashes a window, making the blonde lady think he escaped, and then dun dun dun! Turns out he's behind her with a knife about to kill her. And then it ends. Hooray? I can't get too deep into why I despise this ending without going into the plot of the next movie, but just trust me, it doesn't make any sense. So, with some good performances, boring kills, terrible characters, and shameless sequel bait, I'm going to give Friday the 13th a new beginning a C. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe so that I can see you next time for more R&R. &R. You realize that this R&R &R thing is getting really stupid. Okay, you can stop now.